Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel iBasiac, the place to be for all your vacuum cleaner news, views and reviews. Well today it's another for my classic collection. Basically it's just the vacuum cleaners I featured in the past, maybe two, three years ago, and I thought it's time I did an update video now that I've got high definition. So what are we going to look at today? Well you know because the clue is in the title. Where is it? Where is this vacuum cleaner that I'm going to put through its paces today? Well, it's just here by my, by my feet. Here it is. The Hoover Freemotion. This was the top of the Freemotion range. Quite a flawed vacuum cleaner, the Freemotion, but also, in my opinion, one of the most attractive cylinder vacuum cleaners that Hoover have ever produced. They've produced some pretty humdingers, I must say. But for this era, the millennium, into the 2000s, this is certainly one attractive cleaner. This is similar. Well, you'll see I unboxed, I've done a review of this if you want to check back my old review, but I also unboxed, I've unboxed the bagless version of this. Didn't review it though, don't have that anymore. I've also unboxed the blue version of this, which is very similar, but it doesn't have the remote control, has a slide control here. And um, I've also unboxed and possibly demonstrated by now the Hoover Silent Energy, which was the latest variant of the free motion. It was basically a free motion, but Hoover called it Silent Energy, but they did make some improvements with the carpet and floor nozzle. And this hose was greatly improved. This hose is prone to splitting. So I'm going to be very careful with this cleaner when I do the demonstration. Okay, I'll give you a guided tour of the machine and then it's time to really put this vacuum cleaner through its paces. Well, here she is. And I'm assuming she is a she because something this attractive with all these curves can't be masculine, surely. Anyway, this free motion, finished in a lovely champagne colour, is a fantastic vacuum cleaner. In some ways, and in other ways, it's not. But we're going to see how well this cleaner performs. I did a quick demo of this machine a few years back, but didn't really put it through its paces. So today, I am going to give it the full Monty, the full review. I'm going to test this front and side clean nozzle. We're going to test it on carpets using my bag of filth. I'm also going to test it on a hard floor. And because Hoover claim front and side clean, I'm going to actually see how near it does clean to the edges and if it does indeed clean front ways on as it's supposed to. This model also came standard with the turbo nozzle or the allergen remover with the rotating brushes. So we'll be looking at that in more detail. Comes with this awful three-in-one tool. You've got an extendable crevice tool that side. And this side, you've got this horrible sort of cup-shaped dusting brush come furniture nozzle. In this position, it's for your furniture and your curtains, etc. And you can pop the little brush out. Quite sparse brushes there. Pop those out to do your general dusting jobs. Moving on to the vacuum cleaner itself. Let's just move these out of the way. I will show you. The navigator handle, a little bit of a different design to a regular handle. It's supposed to make it easier to hold, less wrist strain when you're using the vacuum. Let's just move the vacuum out of the way. It does swivel the hose at this end, uh, 360 degrees, but it is fixed at the cleaner end. The hose actually does carry electrical wires that send power to the remote control. So on the remote control we've got four settings. Delicates, which is your lowest power. Whisper, which is a slightly more suction power but a quiet noise level. A setting for hard floor and then the setting for carpet slash allergen. So obviously that's maximum and that little red button is your main on off switch. This little lever here is the telezoom tube thing. 
Well, it controls the telezoom. Basically, once you put your foot on the cleaning head, you squeeze the trigger here and you can raise and lower the height of the, <clears throat> excuse me, the height of the extension tube to suit your height and whatever you're cleaning. Here's the main body of the vacuum cleaner itself. Now for me, what makes this vacuum cleaner very, very attractive is the fact that there are no visible controls on the machine whatsoever. Well, I tell a lie, there is one button that you press on the machine. Otherwise, all the other controls you need are on the handle. There isn't even a pedal for the automatic cord rewind. So it does make for one very sleek, attractive looking vacuum cleaner, especially in this champagne gold finish. So this is the only button on the machine. It says press on it. You press, that opens up your bag compartment. Takes bags, of course, non-reusable. And, oops, it's, it's come away, but it's supposed to self-seal the bag when you take it out of the machine. These, I think, are pure filt ones. Pure HEPA, actually. Pure HEPA anti-odor bags. Behind the bag, there is a washable filter. You can rinse that under the tap and wash it. There's no exhaust filter on this machine. Well, there is a sort of exhaust slash diffuser. It's not supposed to be removed or cleaned. So really, this is the only maintenance, is to keep this filter clean. And of course, to replace your bags when you need to. And you can't use the machine without the filter or the bag in place. You need both in place. Otherwise, the bag door will not close. Also, just where it says press here, there is a little light that illuminates when there's a blockage or when you need to replace the bag. Very large wheels aid the manoeuvrability and a thin rubber type bumper either side of the machine. This finish, although very beautiful, is very easily damaged. I was ultra careful with this vacuum when I used it a few times but unfortunately, so it's got a bit of dust underneath. Unfortunately, if you can just see here, this is the main damage to the finish because it's just a, either a cream or white plastic underneath. The finish is sprayed on and it damages very easily. Well, underneath, you've got your swivel caster up the back there. There's a parking slot too for your nozzle. On the back of the machine, We've got four standing pads, I think Hoover call them, to make the machine more secure when you're standing it on end, when you're cleaning stairs, for example. Got a standby light here, which illuminates when the machine's plugged in. And um, this is where the cable is. You just pull out the cable all the way before you use the vacuum. A bit of dirt there. So there we go. And it's a proper cable on this machine, it's a thick cable, but it's 2200 watts, so obviously this machine can't be manufactured for sale in Europe anymore. So it is, at least, it's a very thick cable and a nice moulded on plug. To retract the cable, because there is no actual switch, it's one of these, what they call a pull-pull mechanism. So basically you just give it a little tug and then it will retract. Normally easier than that, but it has been in storage a while. Normally after you've used it, the cable won't be coiled up like it was then. So it does have quite a good cord rewind on this model. So I'll pull out the cord because I'm going to be using it in a minute. We'll start off with the carpet cleaning demonstration. And of course, another thing that makes this machine look extremely sleek and stylish this is no exhaust vent, no visible exhaust vent. Obviously, for a vacuum cleaner to work, there needs to be air flowing through it. Obviously, air enters the machine through the hose, through the nozzles, or in this case, because there's no hose attached, air would enter directly into the hose inlet there. And it's supposed to pass through the machine. Now, if the air can't pass through the machine, if it's restricted, you're not going to have airflow. 
thus you're not going to have suction. So, on this particular machine, you may have seen it before, but when the machine is actually operating, this little flap here will open, and that is where the exhaust air vents out of this machine. And it does have a little magnet, so it does close nicely and securely when you turn the machine off. Okay, and that's the overview. Ah, one thing though I will show you before I do the demonstration, because it will be involved in the demonstration, is the optional full-size turbo nozzle that you can get with this cleaner. So I'll just show you that first, and then it's time to do some demonstrations. This is the optional J24 free motion turbo nozzle that you can get for the free motion cleaners. Because of the design, it doesn't fit any other machines apart from the silent energy, it will fit that as well. I think I picked this up on eBay for about 99 pence plus delivery, of course. So this is a very, from what I remember, a very effective nozzle. Just take it out. Put the box to one side. So here we have the full-sized allergen remover. I don't know why, but Hoover don't seem to provide full-sized turbo heads with their vacuum cleaners. Even the ones that are marked PETS, they only seem to come supplied with a small nozzle, which is fine for your stairs and upholstery, but it's no good for doing larger areas like your carpets, which is why we have these full-size nozzles. So I will be testing this. This is a German manufactured nozzle because you can just see that trademark there, and I can't pronounce it, so I'm not going to, but it begins with W, and they're a German manufacturer. They make a lot of different floor nozzles and other nozzles for various different makes of vacuum cleaner. Hoover ones, Miele, Sebo, many makes of vacuum have their nozzles. So this should be a good nozzle to use. Anyway, we're going to test the effectiveness of this nozzle as opposed to the front and side clean nozzle, so I'll be doing an area with the normal straight suction nozzle, and then I'll be doing an area next to it using this. We'll see how much more effective it is to have a rotating brush like this one on this particular turbo nozzle. So that's enough of the intro, let's get on with the demonstration. For the first part of the demonstration, I'm going to test the front and side clean nozzle up against this item of furniture. So we'll see how far it reaches up to the edge, if it does, and then I'll do a test with the nozzle straight on just to see if it'll remove the rice. So I'll first of all just do a forward and backward pass right up against the edge of this base of this wardrobe, and then if it does manage to pick everything up I will have to put some more rice down and we'll see how effective this nozzle is at cleaning front ways on. For all the carpet tests, I'm going to use it on the highest setting, which I think is the default setting. When I turn on the machine, it should go into full power straight away. Right, actually, Apart from a little bit of rice that's fallen down that uh, the suction didn't quite grab before I turned the machine off. That is pretty good, but I'm, obviously it's only rice for clearing up and you don't often spill loads of rice down. Apart from, you can just about possibly see here, it's got all the rice that was right up and I put it right up close. So for edge cleaning, edge cleaning rice anyway, it's certainly very effective. Okay, before I test the full-size turbo nozzle. Just going to put some more rice just here and see if the machine is as effective when I use it front ways on. So I need to put more rice down, then I'm just going to go like this and see if it removes all the rice. So as you can see, I've put quite a lot of rice back down on the carpet. So I'm going to turn the machine on again and just go right up against the bottom of this wardrobe and just see how much of this rice the Hoover Free Motion will remove. Well, not quite as impressive. Let's try it once more. Hmm. 
Well, it's done better than a lot of nozzles because a lot of nozzles have a brush at the front. Whereas as you can see on this one, the brush is at the back. So there is still an area. If there was some, maybe some grooves in here, it might have picked some more up. It's still closer actually than a lot of nozzles will clean. But I think where it does excel is cleaning up to the edge. So I'll just remove the rest of this using it like this. So it does actually clean up to the edge very, very well. Okay, so we've still got a lot of rice on this carpet and I'm going to now test the efficiency of the full-sized allergen remover. So again, I'm just going to pass it forward and back just through the middle of this rice. Again, on maximum suction. Wowza! <laughs> wow! That is fantastic! Look at that! It, I, was, I thought it was going to leave a line of shame, a line of uncleaned area. So I thought there might be a little line of rice. But that's a complete clean sweep and I could actually, you could feel the power of it and I could see it bringing up the pile. There is an area on the nozzle here where the belt is that you'd expect not to be cleaned. But I suppose the suction is across the whole width of the nozzle. Whether it does so well on other dirt, like pet hairs, across the full width of the nozzle, I'm not sure. But certainly, if you're in the habit of spilling half a bag of rice on your carpet, this will certainly do the job. As you can see, I've put a lot more dirt down on this carpet. I've added to the rice. I left the rice down on the carpet that wasn't picked up in the first demo. And to that, I've added quite a lot of the contents of my current bag of filth which has been on YouTube an awful lot of times because it's I keep recycling this. In this dirt, apart from the rice, of course you can see bits of paper, you can see carpet fluff, there is dog hairs in here, there's a lot of dust which is mainly used SIBO Duo P powder there's, I can see little bits of couscous. There's all sorts in here. So both nozzles did well on the rice, but how are they going to do on all this dirt? So one side of the dirt I'm going to clean with the straight suction, and the other side I'm going to clean with the full-sized allergen remover. I'm going to start by using the front and side clean straight suction nozzle first. So. As in time-honoured tradition, I'm going to pass the nozzle front and back through the bag of filth. And then we're going to look at the results and then do another clean path, hopefully, this side of the dirt using the turbo nozzle. Again, pretty impressive results. Now, it's not perfect. You can actually see where I've been walking. It has actually, for a suction only cleaner, it's lifted the pile of this carpet. I don't know if you can see where I've been walking. It's maybe hard to tell from the angle. Being uber critical and with my eyes much closer to the carpet, it isn't as impressive as it looks on screen. There are some very small particles and I can see some hairs as well. Especially some golden retriever hairs. They tend to stick to the carpet. There's a little bit of carpet fluff there too. But all in all, that's not bad for just two passes. You can obviously see a difference between the area I've gone over and this area I have yet to clean. Okay then, it's time to attach the turbo nozzle. 
I'll do the same. I'll leave a little gap um, so we can have a direct comparison. There will be a little line of dirt between and we'll see how the turbo nozzle does on this area of dirt. So I'm poised behind the camera with the turbo nozzle attached to the end of the telezoom tube. Switch on full power and we'll do the same test as we did with the front and side clean nozzle. Well, again, another impressive result, but as I suspected, it's brought the pile up a little bit better than the straight suction, but there is a definite but faint line of shame. I'll point to it because I'm not sure you'll be able to see it on the camera and I can't actually see my viewfinder at the moment, so I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if it's being picked up, but if you follow my finger, there is a very slight line of uncleaned dirt. It's mainly a few carpet fibres. And looking closer at the area that it has cleaned, yes, there's a, another golden retriever here. It's done a slightly, slightly better job, I think. There are less small particles visible than this side. But all in all, it's pretty good. Well, while I've got, funnily enough, I've got this strip here that needs cleaning. So if I reach over, shall we test this? Shall we test this nozzle? I think it'll just about go through all that mess. I don't know how much of it it's going to pick up. It is a little bit smaller than the nozzle, so we'll see. That's what I'm going to do. Let's see what the small allergen remover does at cleaning up this strip of dirt here. I'm going to do this demonstration from a different angle so you can see the cleaner front ways on and I've actually attached the turbo nozzle directly to the handle. This is how you'd mainly use this in my opinion for when you're cleaning your stairs or your upholstery you don't need the telezoom tube attached as well also if you're cleaning inside the car you don't want that attached so this is the way I'm going to use this turbo nozzle. So again, it's going to be on maximum power. This is quite a noisy nozzle. It's noisier than the full sized one. So we'll start here, forward and back through the dirt. my viewfinder now so I know that you can easily see the line of shame that hasn't been removed that's down to the fact that we have that little part with no brushing action so that's where it's left this line but obviously if I was to go back and forwards over this area it probably would pick all this up do for now it's going to take me a long time to clean this area some bits have fallen out incidentally all the main cleaning tools apart from the little three-in-one tool do fit on with this push button fitting so they click into place and you press this button to remove the nozzle well I can't possibly leave all this dirt so I'm just going to use actually I'll use the straight suction nozzle on this side and then I'll finish off this part of the demonstration with the turbo nozzle and then it's off downstairs to the kitchen. I'll see how effective the front and side, side clean nozzle is on cleaning a hard floor.
in the kitchen now, and no, you haven't missed the demonstration. This particular cleanish path was left by another vacuum cleaner. I've been doing a lot of vacuum cleaner videos today, and this is the result of testing on an upright vacuum. Well, I'm not going to throw any more dirt down. It's getting late now, and I need to really clean all this up before I go to bed. So instead of my usual thing of passing it back and forward through the dirt, I'm just basically going to clean up all this mess using the front and side clean nozzle. This is not a demo in order to maybe help you if you want to make a decision of buying this vacuum cleaner because it's not really a current model. You might find it somewhere, but it's just really basically a demonstration for people who like to see a lot of mess being picked up. So again, it's going to be on full power, just basically going to clean up, hopefully clean everything up, and then we'll conclude the video. seem to scrape a lot. I don't know if it's due to the fact that it only has one brush. Oh, and if you look underneath, I'm going to have to do a little bit of cleaning of this nozzle when I'm done. But all in all, it's pretty effective on this floor. I possibly would have had an even better result if I went at slightly lower suction, or even the lowest suction. Let's just quickly test that theory. I'm going to put it on Whisper, actually, which is the setting above the minimum setting. to do but uh, I don't want to bore you with everything but I'm sure it will pick everything up off this hard floor so all in all apart from its faults it's not a bad performer especially if you get the full-sized turbo nozzle before I conclude the video I've just discovered somebody carelessly has spilt a load of rice down this narrow gap now this front and side clean nozzle it's not going to get down there, is it? Well, in order to clean this up, I could always put the small three-in-one nozzle on or just take this off and just use the end of the tube and get it that way. But hopefully, another little quirk of this quite well-designed but slightly flawed nozzle is the ability to get into smaller spaces than you'd think. So, let's try and clean the rest of this mess up using the same nozzle without having to change nozzles. Well, mission aborted. It looks so easy on the professional demonstration video but unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be 
staying where I want it to stay. Let's try it once more. There must be a technique to holding it, I'm not sure about this. Well, it's picked some of it up. Let's try it one, we'll give it one last crack of the whip. We'll turn it that way. It's supposed to click in position and stay there. Now, whatever I do, unfortunately, whoops, it's well and truly jammed in there now. <laughs> See, I'm gonna have to move the furniture. That's stuck. Oh dear. On that sad note, I'll leave the demonstration aspect of the video and I'll sum up the Hoover Free Motion. Well, the light is fading, so this will have to be my last piece of filming for today. But I have another very full day tomorrow filming several different vacuum cleaner demonstrations, all to be uploaded over the coming months on my channel iBasiac. Well, what do I think of this machine? Well, until today's testing, I didn't think it was very good. But then again, I didn't use it very much. But now I've used the machine on my bag of filth and seen what it can do. I'm really rather impressed with this vacuum cleaner. Unfortunately, due to the hose, which is prone to splitting, I can't recommend this machine. But if you can still buy the very similar Silent Energy I think that might be a good bet. Now I will be testing, it might have already gone live on the channel, there may be an unboxing, I might not have put the demo on yet, but that will be coming soon. So basically the Silent Energy vacuum cleaner is very very similar to this, but it has a much better, much stronger hose. It doesn't have this nozzle, it has a more standard carpet and floor nozzle. But apart from that they're very similar. So maybe that is one you could look out for. You can still actually buy the Silent Energy, although it is discontinued. Well, that's it. That's the end of my updated demonstration of the Hoover Freemotion Allergy Care Plus Bagged Cylinder Vacuum Cleaner. If you'd like this video, please subscribe and you'll be updated every time I upload a new floor care video. Also, I've got a Facebook page if you want to see any behind the scenes pictures, and I've taken a few on this video, showing you what happens behind the camera, what, a, what sort of messes I get into, what I have to clean up after I've done all these demonstrations. So in front of camera, all looks very clean, but just a few feet away off camera, there are piles and piles of dirt that I have to clean up. So until the next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon.